A good animation isn't just about making things move. It's about how they move. Transitions in Framer let us control duration, easing, and even emulate real-world physics using springs. In this lesson, we'll explore how to craft transitions that feel smooth, intentional, and expressive. Whether you're fine-tuning a micro-interaction or choreographing an entire hero section. Again, for this one, we're going to hop into a project file, and this is actually the same project file as the previous lesson. So if you remix that one already, just head to the second page here called easing, and you'll find exactly what I'm looking at here on my screen. What we'll start with is down here. We're going to compare some of the different easing curves that we have to work with. And easing is really all about creating motion that feels natural, that feels right. And linear is one of those curves that just feels robotic. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go into preview mode so we can look at all of these at the same time and compare them. And you'll find that this linear motion is instantaneously reaching its maximum speed. It's going the same speed the entire way. And it's also instantaneously stopping when it reaches the other end, which is very robotic. This works well for animations that sort of whiz by, but not necessarily animations that start on the screen or end on the screen, where you can see the object begin to move or you can see the object come to rest. Those situations lend themselves better to easing in or easing out, which we'll talk more about in a moment. In fact, the next one down that you see on my screen is ease in out, which means ease in and out. Ease in at the beginning, ease out at the end. And what you're seeing here is sort of a gradual acceleration at the beginning. And then we reach sort of the peak velocity in the middle here. And then a gradual deceleration at the end where it comes to rest kind of naturally, kind of like a ball. You roll a ball by transferring energy into it, which has to happen gradually, even if it seems instantaneous, like a baseball bat hitting a baseball. But let's talk more like a gentle roll of a ball. We slowly transfer energy into it. That energy eventually gets scrubbed off and the ball comes to rest. So most objects in the physical world have a period of time where energy is transferred into them and then a period of time where energy is lost. So ease in and out shows that happening on both ends. Whereas ease in, you see the energy being transferred into the object. It sort of eases into that movement and it reaches its peak velocity at the very end and then stops instantaneously. So ease in is best when you don't see the end of the animation. You only see the beginning of the animation. So that way you see the gradual start. You see that kinetic energy being transferred in. And then that instantaneous stop hopefully happens off screen. So you don't see it just come to an abrupt halt. Ease out, on the other hand, does just the opposite. It starts at peak velocity and then at the end, it comes to rest gradually. So again, like a ball rolling into view, it would slow down gradually and eventually come to rest. So much like ease in, but the opposite, you'd probably want to see this object come to rest at the end, but you wouldn't want to see it instantaneously accelerate to full speed. So hopefully these objects start off the screen and end on the screen. And then last but not least, we have Spring. And Spring is really cool in Framer because we actually have two different ways of approaching how we get this Spring animation, this sort of Spring energy to an object. We can either set it based on the time and just say we want it to be a certain amount of bouncy, or we can start with the physics and then the time is determined by the physics that we choose for our transition. So we'll talk about that more in a moment here, but you can see that the gist of this is that at the very end here, we see the energy sort of overshoot. We see that this goes past the end point here. So if we had this transitioning a value of, let's say, a thousand pixels, it's actually moving further than a thousand pixels. And then it's gradually coming back, sort of like a spring that has the freedom to overshoot and then eventually come to rest with sort of a little wobble to it. So now let's look at how these different easing methods pair with some of those contexts that I mentioned a moment ago things coming on the screen, things going off the screen, things going across the screen, starting and ending off the screen. And that's just below here. So we'll go down to examples. And you can see here that that linear easing makes a whole lot of sense for something that starts off screen and continues and goes off screen, almost like a ticker. 
you don't see how it got rolling. You don't see where it ends. It just sort of continues along doing its thing. It's also good for rotation that just continues on and on, you know, perpetual motion type of things. And then here we have ease in and ease out where the object starts on the screen and ends on the screen. So we see it get going. We see it come to rest. Therefore, we ease it in and we ease it out. And then below, if we only see it coming to rest, we can ease that energy out. And if we only see it get going and we don't see it come to rest, then we can ease that energy in. There's really no reason to ease both if we don't see both. So by using ease out or ease in, we can dedicate more of the duration to that ramp up or that ramp down rather than using half of the duration to ramp up and then half of the duration to ramp down after the layer is already gone. So now let's look at how these things actually manifest themselves as settings in Framer. If you watched the previous lesson, then you saw that we added a hover effect to one layer and we added a press effect to another layer. So I'm actually going to go back to the home page, which is where we did just that. And we'll play with the easing and duration for those very effects. So again, I'm going to come over here to the effect itself. And at the bottom, transition is where we make these decisions for our easing and for our duration. Right now, this is set to spring, but I'm going to switch back to ease because most of the easing curves that we talked about a moment ago are found on the ease tab. And you can work with presets from this drop down menu here, like linear, which we talked about ease in, ease in and out, ease out or do a little bit of overshoot. But I want to show you how the graph editor here works. So I'm going to start with the ease in and out preset, but the graph editor just above lets us customize that. So if we want a little more easing on the end or we want a little more easing at the beginning or we want all the easing to happen more gradually and for the middle section to happen more quickly, we can do all that here on the graph editor. So I can just click and drag these Bezier handles and sort of determine how the speed is going to ramp up at the beginning and how the speed is going to ramp out at the end. And wherever we drag these blue handles to, the coordinates of those positions are shown down here in the Bezier field. So if I did something very specific here and I was really happy with it, I could take this and copy and paste it into the easing for other layers to make sure that I'm being totally consistent here. So the first two numbers are really just an X, Y position for the first dot. And then the second two numbers are the X and Y position of the second dot. So if, for example, I wanted this dot to be at the very bottom and halfway across, that would be 0.5 to be halfway across. And that would be zero to be all the way at the bottom. So you can manipulate these numbers here directly if you wanted to. And similarly, I could say I want the X position of the second handle to be halfway across and I want it to be all the way at the top, which is going to be one. And then the time will determine how quickly this happens from beginning to end. And down here, this preview gives us a handy little visualization of what that time delay and easing are going to look like when it all comes together. And if we didn't want the transition to start immediately, we've also got this little delay field here. But before we wrap up, let's talk about springs here for a moment. If we go to the spring tab, we get two different modes to create this spring animation. One is time, which is sort of a simplified mode that lets us say how long we want this transition to take. Let's say just an even one second. And you can see here that from beginning to end, the transition does take one second. But then based on the bounce value, we could determine just how bouncy and wiggly this gets as it comes to rest. So with a lower bounce value, this is going to happen more gradually and less is going to happen at the end. And with a higher bounce value, it's going to happen more quickly at the beginning so that it has more time to get all that bouncing done by the end of that one second duration. So essentially with these time based springs, we're saying we don't want the transition to take any longer than this. Get all the bouncing done before we reach that time limit. So the more bouncy it is, the more quickly it's going to appear to happen. And the less bouncy it is, the less quickly it's going to appear to happen, even if you leave the time alone. So it's kind of a balancing act between the time and the bounciness. Physics, on the other hand, lets us set stiffness, damping and mass. And then the amount of time that takes is calculated based on those three variables. So by messing with these, we are effectively going to change the amount of time that it takes. So if we stiffen this up, things are going to happen quicker. But as a result of happening quicker, there's more energy. So there's going to be a little bit more bounciness. If we don't like how much bounciness there is, we can add more damping. And damping will sort of mute that out, kind of like a shock absorber. So it's like we got a spring and a shock absorber like the suspension on a car. 
if we reduce the damping, then the spring is free to bounce and bounce and bounce and bounce and sort of continue until eventually coming to rest on its own. And naturally, the more mass we add, the more energy this is going to carry. So again, it's going to get moving a little bit slower, but then it's going to carry more energy and it's going to take longer for it to come to rest. So again, we've got a balancing act here. We've got to figure out how fast do we want this to move. Larger, heavier objects add mass. Objects that you don't want bouncing around for a long, long time add damping. And then use stiffness to determine how explosive or how gentle that motion is. But again, the amount of total time that this transition is going to take up is a byproduct of how we balance all these things. So now if I go into preview mode and we take a look at this, we've got that gentle, heavy bounce on hover. And there you have it. From easing presets to spring physics, transitions help define your site's personality. Mastering these tools means your animations won't just move, they'll move with purpose, elegance, and the tangibility of the physical world. That's it for this one. I'll see you in the next one.